Welcome to day one. I am beyond excited to be here today. I'm just going to double check that I am live, that you can see me and hear me uh, to make sure that all is working well. And it looks like that I am. Thank you so much for joining this challenge with me. This is not the first time I'm doing this challenge and I'm doing it again because I have received so many messages of people that have received so much help in five days. People that have been able to take action and change their life and having a plan and knowing what they needed to do. And I see that there is so many people like overwhelmed and stressed and exhausted and they don't know where to start. So we're going to really go through a plan that works. It's a, it's a solid foundation that we're going to create together here this week that you can take with you. But before we start, guys, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Angelica Allen. I am a stage three back cancer survivor and I'm a quantum health coach. I'm currently studying a Bachelor of Holistics Health Science and I became super passionate about health after my stage three bar cancer uh, diagnosis in 2018. If you are new to my world, you know that this happened four years ago and as a result of that, I changed everything in my life. I changed all my physical habits, my emotional habits, and as a result of that, I started my business two years ago. So even though you know I had gone through a massive life-changing event, you know, I went back to my old kind of life, my old corporate job, but I did old corporate job, but I didn't feel the fulfillment anymore. And I realized that, you know, part of, you know, having a healthy life, part of feeling content and happy was doing and being what you want each day. And this is why I started my business. But today, before we get on to like what we're going to be covering today, I want to start with a breathing exercise. Why breathing? Breathing has been a massive part of my healing journey because I realized that for 38 years I was shallow breathing because I had been in such a state of flight and fight all the time. I had been in such a state of stress and, and overwhelmed for 38 years that I had never stopped to breathe properly. You know, and since then I also became a yoga teacher and breathing has been really a tool that I use to really help me ground myself. So we're going to ground ourselves here so we can listen better, learn better, be open to receiving new information. So I want you to put your hands in your belly and I want you to inhale through your nose and try to, to think that this ball of air is going to come all the way down to your belly. You know, not so much in your chest, and I want you to feel your belly moving up and down. Okay, so let's just take an inhale together. Inhale through the nose. And while you're doing that, you're filling up with your belly, and then exhale through the mouth. While you're exhaling, you're feeling that the, your belly is contracting as well, okay? So let's just try that one more time. Inhale. Inhale one more time. Just one more time, inhale through the nose. All right guys, I really hope that now you feel grounded, that you feel a little bit more in your body that you feel a little bit more situated and, in, and back in yourself. You know, so many people are living outside of their bodies. You know, their minds and their thoughts are pulling them to live outside of who they are. And this week, we're going to really practice habits that it's going to ground yourself and make you feel really grounded in your body and in who you are. And I want to start by talking about something that... It was, uh, a, a, again, a solid foundation for uh, really starting to 
uh, create those physical habits that I needed to create, you know, because I was going through a crisis moment, you know, bear in mind that I had an emergency surgery, surgery, my body was a wreck, and I had a month before my chemotherapy treatment started. So I needed really to focus on really catching up with some physical healing so I could put up with the 12 sessions of chemotherapy that was ahead of me. So I couldn't really take like big steps because when I was, you know, I, I was in a right stage. Now I had really dug a very deep hole to myself and all I could do was to take small steps. But in saying that, there was a very important part of me that when I started really analyzing and looking of how I had lived my life for 38 years and what I needed to do to not only recover and heal, but to create a different life. At the core of my being, there was something that I felt that I needed to process differently. And I feel that so many people in the world feel like this now, but they either try to suppress it or to ignore it, or they go against it, which none of those tactics are helpful when you're trying to process something in a healthy way. And that is a very easy concept and a very, a very simple sentence. And it's the, the statement of I am enough. When I look at your answers, when I look at where you are at at the moment and everything that you shared, and I really appreciate you being honest and sharing with me for the people that were brave enough to answer the questions to join this challenge. But when you look at yourself and you think, you know, I'm in this cycle of procrastination, I'm eating bad foods, I'm not exercising, I know what to do, but I'm not doing. At the core of that, there is a part of you that doesn't feel that you are enough, right? And I am saying that with all my heart because I have been there. You know, although from the outside, my life looked perfect. You know, I had a, I had a husband, he's still my husband, and we were happy and we are very happy, much happier now. I had two beautiful kids, you know, they're still going and thriving. I had a job, um, you know, we had a house. We had everything going for us. And from the outside, you saw myself thinking, oh my God, she's such a strong lady. You know, she's got it all sorted. You know, she's got everything going for her. But on the inside, I was a shell of myself. I was falling apart. I was exhausted, not only physically, but emotionally. I was drained. I was angry. You know, I had so much anger inside. Because deep down, I didn't feel I was enough. I didn't feel I was worthy. And my actions started really creating this ripple effect and attracting things in my life that made me feel more and more that I wasn't enough. And I want to tell you today like that, you know, you might have gone through some things that are, you know, beyond imagination. You might be going something right now that is really, really painful, you know, like either a health crisis or something emotional or something financially. And you might be thinking to yourself, you know, why me? You know, why do I have to go through this? I have been, I have gone through so much already. Why do I need to go through this, right? I was at that stage in my life, right? I had been diagnosed with stage three bar cancer and I had gone through a lot before that, you know? And I was like, you know, why do I have to go through this? You know, and the truth is I needed a shake up. You know, I needed to change my entire life and a little shake, it wasn't going to do the job. I needed to start being honest and true to myself and to really start understanding what I had been doing to cope, you know, by my behaviors, adaptations to cope with this feeling of not being enough. And when I started putting my head above the water and I realized I wasn't the only one going through bad times through hardship, you know, through, through, you know, issues, physically, emotionally, everything. I wasn't the only one. Everybody in the world were going through, had gone through the affair share bit as well. And I needed to ground myself into where I was at and what I needed to do to get myself out of that. And I needed to take full responsibility. There was no point 
at 38 years old to going back to going like, oh yeah, but I'm, I've got cancer because, you know, my family and because of this and because of that, you know, if you are new to my world and I had massive problems with my family, I had lots, I held on to lots of anger and resentment and I even made a course around forgiveness because that was a massive part of my healing process. You know, I can add the link below if, if you are in that place because that is poisonous to you. You know, whatever you say, whatever you justify, you know, they could have done something horrible. But the longer you keep that anger inside of you, that is poisonous to you only. And I know that because that was a, a massive part of my cancer. But at the core of my being, I didn't feel it was enough because... You know, I had a narrative, you know, my dad treated my brother differently. He gave everything to my brother. You know, I was a girl in Brazil. I grew up in a very chauvinist culture. I left my country because I didn't want to follow what all the girls, you know, had to follow in Brazil. You know, get married, be a good girl, get married, have kids. You know, I had this narrative going on nonstop in my head. You know, it was a, like a little perfect movie that I had created for 38 years with all the pieces together. But that narrative made me sick. That narrative made me feel every single day that I wasn't enough, that I wasn't worthy, that I didn't matter. You know, that my life was worse than others, that I was going through too much. And you might have the same narrative. You know, this narrative is going inside your head. You know, and it, statements like, you know, I am a procrastinator. I, I, I'm never able to eat healthily. You know, I'm always self-sabotaging myself because, you know, I come from this family. My family was messed up. My parents got divorced. You know, my parents lost everything when I was a teenager, which my parents did. You know, all of this story that we tell ourselves. And before we know, these little stories start getting this ripple effect of uh, this energy around you. And you start attracting more and more proof and more and more things to make you feel and be stuck in that place or feeling that you are enough, feeling that you are not worthy, feeling that you don't matter. And then your actions follow that because that's all you know. You are just reinforcing that pattern. So it's that belief that you have, you know, because of this and this and that. I am like that. And, you know, there is this energy field that makes you behave in that same way, you know, to, to really, to really be in, in alignment with what you believe. And this keeps reinforcing over and over and over and over again with your beliefs and behaviors and actions and thoughts. Now, it's very easy for me to say to yourself, hey, I know you matter. You matter. You know, you are enough. Look at everything that you've done. Look at everything that, you know, you've accomplished. You've got a beautiful family or, you know, you've got a great business or, you know, look at how you support your family or whatever. But until you feel it, nothing is going to change in your life. And for me, it was very much that journey. When I was diagnosed with cancer, I wanted to live for my kids because they were six and four and I couldn't imagine their life without me. I was like, what, how, they, how can they grow up without mom? And there are many people that grow up without their moms. But I just didn't want my kids to be those people. I wanted to do everything I could to stay alive for them. And that kept me going for a bit. That, that, that really started helping me to change, you know, my habits, my, I changed my diet, I started exercising. And when I started self-quarantining myself, and it was just me, myself, and I, in a confined space inside my house, when everybody would leave and I would stay in silent. And inside of me, I would be screaming, thinking like, who am I? I can't spend any time with this person because I don't know who this person is. In actual fact, I don't know if I want to know who this person is because I'm too scared to know this person. But the more time I spend with myself, the more time I just showed up 
in whatever form I was, angry, upset, sad, scared, I started developing this relationship with myself. And the more I started developing this relationship with myself, I started understanding who I was and why I was doing the things that I was doing. Why I was behaving the way that I was behaving. Why I was self-sabotaging myself. Why I was lying to myself. Why I wasn't being true to myself. And the more I did that, the more I had self-compassion towards myself. And the more I had self-compassion to myself, the more I realized I was enough. I matter. And I didn't need anybody else to tell me that. I didn't need anybody else's approval. I didn't need anybody else to love me because I loved myself. And I believe that this is the foundation of everything that I still do to this day. Four years after my diagnosis, everything that I mentioned here to you about my breakfast and morning routine, I do that. Obviously, I might do more exercise and I'll meditation a little bit more, you know, because I want you to start somewhere. But that's where I started. So trust the process because it works, right? It's a combination of thought, action, inspiring conversation. But you can't have just one. You can't just come here and listen to me and expect that you're going to change unless you take action. Unless you put your hand up and go, you know what, yeah, I don't feel I am enough, but I want to feel I am enough. And you start, okay, so what can I do now? Guess what? Doing 10 minutes walk on spot, that you, that's you telling your body and your cells, you are enough. When you're making yourself your breakfast, when you stop the outside world and you stop looking at your phone and doing whatever you were doing before in your morning routine, and you stop and you make your breakfast, is that you telling your body and your cells, you are enough. When you drink that glass of water, that's you stopping and telling yourself you are enough. Guys, our body, it, it, it's a way more clever than our mind. I know it sounds crazy to say that. Our thoughts are very, very powerful, but our, our bodies, it keeps the scores. They're listening to us. They, 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 they know what we're doing. They know how we're feeling at a cellular level. If you don't feel you are enough, you're going to attract situations in your life that it's going to really create that same thought and belief in yourself. Relationships. You know, clients. You know, financial issues. You know, the relationships with your family, friends. Unless you create this base, on, it's, a, it's, a, it's a grounding. You know, this is not like a flimsy house. This is a house that when you build on top, has got a very strong foundation. And the foundation is you. Knowing, feeling, and being, you are enough. Now, it's not going to happen overnight. But as you take action, conscious action, as you have the intention, you know, the intention is the number one. As you have the right intention, and you have the thought, and you take the action, you know, you keep feeling, feeding this cycle and reinforcing this new brain pattern. And you keep reinforcing that. And when you reinforce this new brain pattern, it becomes a new habit. Okay? If you think my story is inspiring, all I did was to change my habits. I am 42 years old. I feel the healthiest I've ever been. I don't, ha I don't take any medication. I get out of bed at 5 o'clock. I have lots of energy until I go to bed at 9 o'clock. What you see is what you get. This is true. This is my life. You know, as you know, I don't even put any makeup, you know, to come life. This is me. This is the life that I live. Why? Because I changed all my habits. I was ready to change everything in my life. You know, most people, when they're in front of me and we are in a sales call and I tell them, look, this is it. I will make you accountable. They're too scared because they know I'm going to make them accountable. This is a free challenge. 
And although you can listen to this and don't, don't do anything behind the scenes, you can also listen to this and take action because it's free. But you need to make yourself accountable. You know, because unfortunately, you know, like there is so much I can do. I can come halfway, but you need to go the other halfway. No one is going to come and change your life for you. Even if, if I gave you a million dollars today, you're still going to feel you're not enough if that's what you're feeling. You're still going to have problems with eating too much sugar. You're still going to have problems with attracting the wrong relationships. If you don't change at the core of who you are, this is the foundation of freedom, of happiness, of contentment. This is building your house, the right house. I say this from experience. I don't ask my clients to do anything that I have never done. Because like I said to you, what I've asked you to do in your morning routine, I did this morning. I did my 20 minutes meditation. I did my 30 minutes weight exercises today. And I had my porridge for, um, for breakfast. And I drank my water actually uh, when I woke up. And I did not look at my mobile. I still do them four years on. You know, will I keep doing this? Yes, I will. Because these days, I don't need to remind myself anymore why I'm doing like I did at the beginning. Angelica, remember, you need to get out of bed because you've got cancer. Angelica, remember, you need to get out of bed because you don't want the cancer to come back. Angelica, you need to get out of bed because you need to be alive for your kids. I had to do that. And I did that. But now it became a habit and it's ingraining me. And if anything, if I have to bring conscious to this habit today is I get up in the morning and, you know, I actually, I have a gratitude journal. I write down the three things that I, you know, I'm grateful for. And there is always a common pattern. I always write, I'm grateful for my body because I know how much my body has done for me. And I know that wherever you are in your life right now, you could be sick. You could be feeling lots of difficulties in your physical body. And I know that your body has done a lot for you. Because our bodies are very, very resilient. But we can only take it so far. Because one day your body's going to say, stop, like mine did. And unless you start doing something before that, you are going to get to that point, whether you like it or not. Because if you keep doing the same things over and over again, your body will get to a point, a crush point, they'll say, stop. You know, I say this with confidence these days because before I used to be like, oh my God, you know, like, you know, is this a strong message? Yes, it is a strong message and it's a harsh message, but that's the reality of it. You know, I was reading a book, you know, a third of Americans these days, you know, they are on obese and uh, overweight scale. You know, besides of all the different diets and all the different things and, and vitamins and shakes and things that they have come up in the market with. People are still struggling. They can't control their weight. They can't exercise every day. When people ask me, what are you going to do for me? And I tell them, look, we're going to change your habits. Well, I know what to do, but you're not doing it. You are not doing it. Be honest to yourself. You are not doing it. And you haven't done it for the last 10 years, for the last 20 years. And you, unless you start saying to yourself, I am not doing it. I might know what I need to do. But I am not doing it. Bottom line is, I am not going to get anywhere unless I start doing it. And that is the biggest problem in the world. But when you start anchoring yourself, I need, you might need some reminders. Anchoring yourself, I am enough. I need to do this because I feel I am enough. You know, I am going to, I'm going to break my pattern of eating, you know, bread and butter and jam and, and a big, you know, coffee with, you know, milk and three sugars, I'm going to make my porridge. That's breaking the pattern because you're taking a different action. And your body's going to go like, oh, okay, yeah, that's nice. I like this. I'm, I prefer this rather than the, you know, the bread and the, the, the coffee. But your thoughts are going to be like, oh, but I really miss the bread and the coffee. And then you do it again, the porridge next day. And then your brain go like, oh, okay. Yeah, because your gut will feel better. And then it's going to start sending messages to your brain going, yeah, this is, this is, you know, I'm feeling better about myself now. You are picking up some strength. Most people, 
you know, there's a lot of people that follow me. They are health coaches, they are life coaches. They want to start their business. You know, they are focused on just creating wealth. But on the inside, physically and emotionally, they are broken. And I, I really believe that creating wealth from, from a broken foundation is very, very difficult. Creating a business from a broken foundation is very, very difficult. Because to become an entrepreneur it requires you a lot of resilience, a lot of physical and emotional strength. And if you haven't got that already, it's going to be very, very difficult. So if your objective is to become an entrepreneur, that's even a, if that is your why I need to create wealth for my family, I want to create wealth for myself, then this is your foundation. This is not something that is like, oh, if I have time. No, this is what you do every single day for the rest of your life. If you want to have a successful business. You know, for me, it was very much like, you know, gradually after I strengthened my physical health, and if you don't know my story, I finished 12 sessions of chemo feeling stronger than I started. When I finished my chemo, the oncologist nurse told me, Angelica, I can't believe you were able to finish this chemo. And I was like, well, don't everybody finish? And he said to me, no. In eight years of oncology, I've seen four people finishing this chemo. I didn't know that. I used to cycle to click chemo. Two weeks later, I was cycling. I was doing whatever I wanted. So I, I, I knew what I needed to do to strengthen my body. But I didn't stop that. I kept doing the work. And I still do them. And then I, I tackled my emotional health, which was the anger, the resentment, that I couldn't forgive and all of that. And then once I've done all that, I went back to my corporate job and I realized I wasn't fulfilled anymore. And then I realized I needed to leave that job because that was also not adding to my health. So I started my business. But can you see, I started my business from a strong place. My physical health was like an automatic pilot. My emotional health was an automatic pilot. So I could focus fully on my professional health, on my professional life, on creating my business. So this is the foundation. The day that you start feeling you want enough, you're worthy to stop your day to make you a healthy breakfast, to stop your day to exercise, to stop your day to drink a glass of water, your life is going to change. Don't take these small changes for granted. Because like I said, if I am here today, I started making small changes. Now guys, I don't want to go too long because I know everybody is very short in time in this day and age. So I want to give you homework. So the homework from yesterday was to take a picture of your, your, of your breakfast. I want to see those pictures. I, this is how you keep yourself accountable. Take a picture of your, your porridge, your shake, or whatever you're having for breakfast. Now, today the homework is, I want you to write a little post-it note, I am enough. And you're going to stick that onto your mirror. And every day when you're brushing your hair, you're brushing your teeth, you're going to look at it and you're going to say to yourself, I am enough. You're going to connect to that feeling, I am enough. You're going to feel like, you know, what, what, my life, what would my life be if I felt I was enough? You can, if you close your eyes and you feel that and you think that, you feel lighter. You feel more empowered. You feel more energy. So a little post note, I am enough. You stick to your mirror. Take a picture of yourself in the mirror or just a stick note, but I want to see that. This is what it keeps you accountable. Okay, if you want to change your life, you need to take action. Because nobody's going to make, do those things for you. Guys, thank you so much for being here. This is day one. Don't underestimate the power of small habits. Don't underestimate the power of, of changing your habits. We are our habits. You are what you do and what you think every day. If you're putting rubbish in your body, you're going to feel like rubbish. And the result is just going to be what you don't want. You need to break the cycle and create a new pattern. And this is what we're doing here. Thank you so much for being here. If you have any questions, any comments, please add below. And I'll see you tomorrow at the same time. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to see the pictures and to see you guys doing the homework. Take care.